My show is so hot, honey. The day you can be made to glue free the jelly free. Oh. Hey, darlings. Hey, mira eso. It's Soraya's from Bada with Soraya's Fierce Kitchen and Soraya's Fierce Cooking Show. Darlings, I just want to say hello and I'm wishing you all a really good day and I hope you're doing well. Just wanted to just check in a little bit, you know, that's what everybody says when they do a video, just checking in, but I did. I just came back from helping out some new friends of mine here in California that are into nutrition and weight loss and all of that, and they just need a little bit of support with their projects. So I'm helping them out, and they're really nice. And it's allowing me actually to present myself beyond the food stand, beyond the cooking show, with these ladies that have a similar mindset about nutrition and weight loss like I do, which is always a good thing, right? So we're in the same tribe. And they're really pretty and they're everybody's always younger than me. They're close to my age, but I'm still older, but that's not a big deal. The point is that it feels really good to kind of connect with other ladies that are into the nutrition field. They're not transgender, they're cisgender. Their clients are cisgender mainly. So it's kind of interesting, right? <laughs> It's interesting for me because I'm really, really grateful because it allows a place for me as a transgender Latina who's brand new, like a Madonna song, like a virgin, integrating into other workspaces, places beyond, you know, my cooking show is really, you know, my own zone, is real comfortable and I appreciate that. The farmer's market too is kind of my own zone and I appreciate that, I'm really grateful and this kind of just extends. Uh, my vision of being in a service industry, which I'm already in, which is the service industry that I've created for myself, but to actually be in someone else's environment and help them out and, and help them with their clients, right? So it's really interesting to see, you know, feedback and how I'm responding, you know, because it's not, you know, it's not my bubble, you know, my safe little bubble of the cooking show. Uh, or my food stand, not that it's not unsafe, but you know, anything new, right? You're challenging your comfort zone, you're challenging your beliefs. And then I think when you're LGBTQ, you know, you may be concerned, you know, about how people are going to respond, are they going to accept me as, as a messenger for these people that are not transgender, you know, all that stuff. Which I don't want to minimize those thoughts because they're very real. You know, when you're transgender and you're coming out, right? Um, on a lot of levels, social, economically, with employment, I'm putting myself out there. So, you know, there's always, you know, you're like, oh my God, how's it going to be? And, you know, my look, I'm not passing 100%, you know, my facial hair, which is something I want to talk about in this video. You know, I feel like my facial hair, especially my mustache, which I've gotten some electrolysis done on it. I feel like it's just popping in my box, like, and I don't want to do too much research on this, but I, I don't want to even say it, because I really am enjoying the effects of progesterone, because it is a bio-identical component into my HRT therapy with my estrogen, which actually today, Saturday, is my estrogen day, and Saturdays and Tuesdays. I take my injections twice a week. Um, we can go into another conversation about that too. I want to go back to the progesterone. So I'm not going to like look it up. Does progesterone do this? What's the side effect? I like it. I want to just, I do want to say about progesterone that the first doctor who prescribed it, um, oral, right? It's an oral capsule. I wasn't having that great results with it. I was sleeping well, but I was fighting with everybody in my dreams. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything else. So, there's something was going on. Um, and I didn't like that because I felt like I was exhausted when I got up because I was fighting with everybody while I was in a deep ram. <laughs> it's so funny. So, I told my therapist, listen, I, you know, I can't do this anymore. Like, this progesterone has got me not aggressive during the day, but in my night time, I'm, I'm beating up my brother, my father, uh, Mr. DeCourcy in fifth grade. I'm beating everybody up. I'm catching up. <laughs> 
So I was like, I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, so she's like, okay, well, sorry guys. I hope my really good friends are not watching this. But she goes, well, try to take it anally. I was like, what? This is going to be a really big video. <laughs> not that my, my anus is big. Um, it is now, actually. My cheeks are. But uh, not because I'm taking progesterone off my culo. But <laughs> Sorry, guys. Look, if you're a transgender and MTF, then this information might help you. So she goes, you know, take it anally. I'm like, ah, girl. She goes, just take it anally, you know. Get a little lube or whatever you need. Tuck it in. I was like, okay. And I'm going to be really honest. I've been very detached to my body anyway because of my gender dysphoria. And as a gay man, I didn't identify with my anus in, in that way of, of penetration, inserting. Of, no, that just wasn't it. Very rarely would I have any desire. So when the doctor was like, take it anally, I was like... But then I thought about it now that I'm older too. And I'm like, you know, I remember uh, there was a book about getting in touch with your anus kind of thing. And it really said this, you know, like you really need to explore it and massage it and you know get to know the muscles and how it works and I was like yeah that's not like gross having anything you know it's like that no, not a bottle not a bottle not a top either I eat it <laughs> so when she said that I was like you know what I think it's time since I have a butt now <laughs> from surgery and HRT the estrogen and the progesterone has got especially on my breasts and I've got curves I'm really happy Dr. Simak, I got really chiseled it in, nice. And then HRT is helping, right? Really, it looks really natural, really great. So I figured, you know, trying the progesterone anally would be a good experiment for me to get acquainted to, you know, that part of my body that I've actually neglected in many ways. You know, I wash it and I use it every day for normal excretion, but you know, there could be some pleasure. I've had one or two incidences where there was some pleasure with anal penetration yes and so I was like you know being transgender you know I want to be open to like that happening more not that that is a prerequisite into being a transgender female I want to be able to please my partner and all of that and please myself really please myself and please my partner so you know it's been cool so a better reaction result from taking it anally I just saliva and insert I guess now since I've gotten used to it it's easier uh, so the saliva works and so I just want to just put that out there that if progesterone doesn't work for you orally you get a side effect that you're not comfortable with maybe similar to mine I know I have issues anger issues and all that stuff just because I'm human you know growing up the way I grew up too you know so resolving a lot of stuff uh, was well um, and so the progesterone now is a lot less of that. Sometimes it's, there's still a lot of confrontation in my dreams. But I'm that type of person anyway that I'm just working through all this stuff. But I don't want it to be enhanced, especially uh, in my sleep or any ways, because I don't want it. I want, you know, I want peace, love, and happiness. So I feel more at ease with it. But I did hear tinge in the past that progesterone maybe can pop more hair in your face. So. I'm not sure. So back to this little J-O-B. It was not really a J-O-B. I'm just helping these girls out. It's, you know, it's training for me actually to kind of work with people and for them to, they know I'm transgender and they're, they're accepting me. I'm, don't tell them that I'm so grateful that they're giving me this opportunity. They're letting me help represent them. I think that's cool. It's pretty amazing, you know. So I'm really grateful. Don't tell them that I'm grateful because uh, I don't want them to know. I don't want them, you know, they, they don't need that. Anyway. They're just really nice and I hope it lasts for a bit. So the progesterone, if again, so I just want to go back. If you're having problems with it or orally and you're getting a little bad reaction, maybe try it anally. And um, what else do I want to say? Um, I think that's it. You know, that's it. Um, I haven't been at the food stand for a few weeks because my brother passed away. And then I'm not working for them, these, well I'm not working for them, but I'm not helping them on um, my farmer's market days, but I, my car had problems, it wouldn't lock, it's just crazy things started happening. I think just also my brother's passing and all that just kind of just drained me because it just kicked up a lot of stuff for me about my past with him. 
So I'm a free transgender, I'm a free girl and talking about it. Sorry, it's the truth. So I was taking estrogen twice a week, went back to my original endocrinologist. He goes take estrogen once every two weeks injection. I would advise, well no, no, everybody's different. I prefer shots twice a week. Uh, so I'm taking 12 milligrams on Tuesday, Saturday and Tuesday. And then the other doctor was like, oh, take 20 milligrams every two weeks on Saturday. I don't like it. I felt like my nose was getting oily uh, and it wasn't at all. I felt like my pores already were opening back up. They were kind of getting smaller. So I did some research to online and I think that like what my original endocrinologist said that the, the steady intake of estrogen is much better than just peak up and then two weeks and then you're leveling down, you peak up. I agree with her. So I do feel that the twice a week or once a week is better than uh, every two weeks and then this big old injection. So. What else can I say? I'm really grateful for this little uh, service position that I'm doing with these ladies because it's allowing me to, to be uh, out and about visible transgender like more days during the week which is really good for me to integrate into society and be visible as a transgender woman more, you know, and just be out there and represent, you know, uh, offering my skill and my passion and my services, you know, because I have a lot to offer. <laughs> And I want to say, God bless my brother, may he rest in peace. I move on and I have a, a younger sister that I adore, an older sister who I really care for too, even though she's, she's, we're all crazy, we're all crazy. And then my younger brother who if he wants to talk to me, he will, when he feels like it and that's okay too and I accept that. I just want to say that I'm accepting everybody on their terms, so you want to... You want to be nice, I'm nice. You want to be cohesive, I'm cohesive. You want to stay in touch, I'm, I'll stay in touch. But if you don't want any of those things, then that's okay. Then I'll, you know, I'll find other friends and family that will have a mutual interchange of contact and affection and com you know, compassion. It'll be a steady flow. Steady like the two times a week of the injection of the estradiol. You get the drift. So uh, give me a steady flow, baby. <laughs> Drip, drip, intravenous. Little by little, you know, it's cool. We're doing it, we stay in touch, we support each other, we're there for each other, and we grow, right? And we love. Sorry there's no cooking today, but again, this is a life recipe too. And progesterone, estrogen, talk, okay? So I'll talk to you soon. This is Soraya Subada at Soraya's Fierce Kitchen and Soraya's Fierce Cooking Show. Thanks for letting me talk to you, okay? I hope something here helps you. Okay, bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Mwah. Welcome to my show, honey. Welcome to Soraya's Kitchen. When you're feeling blue, you don't know what to do. Carrying such a heavy load, honey. Feels like you're all alone. You need a new recipe. Well, I'm the one to see. Tiny rolls along you. Wanna hear my song? So welcome to my show. My show is so hot, honey. The vegan meat, the gluten free, the dairy free. Oh. Hey, darling. No longer a man. No, it's Soraya. Soraya Sobada with Soraya's Fierce Cooking Show and Soraya's Fierce Kitchen. And I'm really excited about the Soraya's Fierce Kitchen because last Friday was my first time at the farmer's market here in Long Beach, California. So yay, because that was a big step and a lot of steps that were taken in order to get to that position of being at the farmer's market and do well enough to spread out into other markets and spread into LA and the goal of course is that I'd like to have a healthy Latin cooking restaurant serving my food and now that I've gotten into vegan cooking of course a restaurant that's going to serve vegan healthy Puerto Rican food. A lot of my cooking is fusion with Chinese and some Italian and all of that stuff. So I'm inviting you to stop by one Friday 
here in downtown Long Beach at the Promenade from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. to taste my empanadas. It's gluten-free, it's dairy-free, it's vegan. So if you're in the neighborhood, please stop by and see me and say hi. That would be excellent. And if you want to come and buy an empanada or two or three, that'll be fabulous. And support healthy Latin cooking, Puerto Rican style, vegan style, Soraya Sobreda style. So thank you and stop by Soraya's Fierce Kitchen soon. Bye. <laughs> the first that was good. very good. You don't even miss the meat. <laughs> It tastes like beef, but it's not beef. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> How did you like the empanada? Okay, no, because it wasn't recorded before. <laughs> oh, I it all over. And you're such a natural, too. <laughs> oh, thank you. Soraya's, right? Yeah. I'm trying to say, okay. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Come to Soraya's Vegan for Food. For oh. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm I, so I, I edit it. Like, I'm like, I can't even talk. <laughs> I edit it. Don't rocks. worry. But thank you. Yeah. All right, so I have two gentlemen here that just tried my empanadas at the farmer's market. This is Soraya. And if you could tell me what you felt about the empanadas. They had so much good flavor. It felt like there was meat in there with no meat. And I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. And you, sir? The right amount of condiments, uh, the taste was amazing. It, it was like full flavor. Um, I'm glad you're here, and I will be coming here every Friday that I'm off. <laughs> so yes, thank you very much for being here. Uh, thank you so much, both of you. I really appreciate the response and the feedback, okay? Right. This is gonna go on my Instagram account. I'll give you my business card so you can look me up. I have a YouTube channel. And I air here at uh, Patnet TV in Long Beach. Uh -huh. I have a oh, cooking okay. show that I do. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, Great. yeah. And uh, vegan, yes. Yes, all the way. Yes. Yeah, everything that I'll make here will be dairy-free and gluten-free and vegan. Awesome. So, we'll be all right. So I'll be introducing you. a lot of dishes. Thank you, Thank you both. My show is so hot, honey. The vegan meat, the gluten-free, the dairy-free. Oh. Hey, darlings. Hey, everybody. This is Ryan at the Farmer's Market for the very first time in my life. I'm serving my gluten-free vegan Puerto Rican empanadas. So right now, uh, camera lady, camera person, Talia, my helper, we're making the salsita that's gonna go for the empanadas. We have more than enough here. But these are classic Puerto Rican flavors. Vegan, there's no meat, there's no dairy, totally gluten-free, totally plant-based. And we'll see how today goes, but today's my first day. Yay! Yay! Bye! <laughs> And we get an empanada dance. Yes. I'll be back. How do we feel about these empanadas, guys? They're amazing. These are awesome. These are worth this trip to Long Beach today. I'll be back. Thank you. We have empanadas. I just want to say that for us, and I want to welcome you to a special segment of Sarah Sarbada's Fierce Cooking Show. We're here in Councilman Daniel Drum's office and I am so glad I have this opportunity. I'm a Jackson Heights resident and Councilman Daniel Drum has been amazing in the work that he's doing in the community and I've been wanting for some years now to sit down with the councilman and discuss current events, current political topics uh, that are reflecting the Jackson Heights community and the New York City community as a whole. So I'd like to present Daniel Drum. 
Well, thank you, Soraya. It's really great to be here with you. And I don't know, you seem really hot today. <laughs> you're cooking. Believe me, you're cooking. I try to cook all the time. Uh, when I'm, really when I'm by the stove or not. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing great. You're doing thank beautiful. you. Thank you for the compliment. So, thank you. Yeah. So, I'm really glad that you're here. Thank you. Uh, I know you wanted to talk a little bit about the Muni IDs. Yes. So, you want me to tell you a little bit about please that? Please tell us all about it. Of, it's, a, it's, a interest, it's a very important topic, and please. Sure. Please. It's one of my proudest accomplishments, and I wear it here on my lapel actually Excellent. and um, municipal identification is for everybody in New York City it's for anybody who lives here it's for undocumented folks it's for transgendered folks it's for homeless people mm -hmm. it's for the formerly incarcerated it's for long-time residents or even people who already have documentation or a driver's license this is for everybody in New York City I have called it the must-have accessory of 2015 and uh, we uh, wrote the legislation for this identification because we knew that there were folks who couldn't get identification and uh, we wanted them to feel as much a part of New York City as everybody else. Um, there are people who are undocumented, for example, who when they go to their child's school can't get into the building because they didn't have a photo ID to pick up their child from school. Uh, there are, everybody today in, in, in the world needs identification. You can't go downtown Manhattan and get into a building in downtown without some type of photo ID. Mm -hmm. um, for our transgender folks, it's really important for them that they be able to choose whatever sex they want on their card or no sex at all, no identifier mm -hmm. at all. So uh, for all those reasons, that's why we wrote the legislation. And on top of it, there are all these benefits that are attached to it. So, for example, if you go to one of the sites, and there are three sites in Queens, there are 17 citywide, uh, and you bring the papers that you need to prove, one, who you are as a person, and two, your place of residence, and you can find out what papers they'll accept for that by going to 311 or idnyc.gov, uh, and you bring those down, um, I'll take your picture and they'll get you set up with an identification card. But on top of that are these benefits. The card is free and the benefits are free. So you will get membership to 33 cultural institutions around the city. If you want to take your family to the Bronx Zoo, for example, and you have your Muni ID, and you get your membership in the Bronx Zoo, you can take your family there for free. You want to go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, you can do that. Queens Botanical Gardens, 33 different cultural institutions around the city. And then on top of that, it can be used as a library card for any one of the libraries in New York City as well. But on top of that, you get a 20% discount in those uh, cultural institutions as well, in the gift shops. And then on top of that, you get discounts at, for Broadway and theaters and, and all different types of shows. And on top of that, you can get a prescription uh, discount as well. So, you know, if you didn't have the reason just to want to go out there and get the ID for the ID, we have the hook-ins, which are all these benefits that come with the card. So it's really a card for all New York. Yeah, that's that's excellent. I mean, I, I've heard about the perks with the card besides having, you know, the ID, you know, uh, the Bronx Zoo, like you mentioned, the museum. Uh, but, what, you know, I, I really love everything else that's attached to it. And the reason why I love it, because I think for what it does for undocumented immigrants, that say, finally have a form of ID, you know, it gives them an incentive to go to the Bronx Zoo, to like, you know, just venture out like in their communities and in the, in the five boroughs and, and take advantage of what's out there. and. I just think that's an excellent thing. It's also, it kind of brings a, a big community out of the shadows, right? So for my undocumented community here in Jackson Heights, the area that I represent, it's huge. Yeah. You know, um, oftentimes on any given Saturday night, you'll see people being stopped or harassed by the police. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have identification, the next thing that will happen, like if you get caught urinating over the small amount of marijuana or something like that, uh, is that they'll take you to the police station. If you have identification, they usually just write you a summons and say, here's your ticket, pay your fine, or show up in court to fight it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But for undocumented folks, if you don't have that identification, you have to go to the precinct. Mm -hmm. And usually at the precinct, that then means an arrest, 
And if you're arrested, that then means a trip to Rikers, or at least to one of the courthouses. Mm -hmm. And then from there, the possibility of deportation uh, exists. Now, we've also written some legislation to try to prevent some of those deportations, but it's a very terrifying thing. And for the undocumented folks who already have a mistrust of the police department and sometimes of government in general, yes. you know, not having some type of official identification uh, is very troublesome to them. Mm -hmm. So, to me, creating the ID card was also a way to begin to build trust between the undocumented community and the police, because the police must accept this identification card as proof of who they are. So in other words, if they get stopped and they show the police officer the card, that is proof positive that they are a New York City resident and they have a right to be where they're at. That's wonderful. That, to me, will alleviate so much pressure for that community, you know, for the undocumented community. I mean, I know if it were me, I was telling um, your staff, I, I recently lost my license uh -huh. and I had no picture ID. Uh -huh. I had no picture ID for these two weeks waiting for my new, and I felt horrible. It's like, how about if I get stopped, you know? I'm, you know, I have nothing you to show. You feel naked without it. Yeah, you know? I was like, oh my God, like, you know, you yep. need ID. So I think it's just wonderful for people, you know, whether you're documented or not, you know, you, I could use that as another form of mm -hmm. backup ID just in case, you know? You know, when we signed the bill into law, uh, a woman testified uh, at, the, um, at the signing with the mayor. The mayor was there and all, all of the big shots from around the city were there. I was fortunate to be there as well. And uh, the woman uh, got up and she testified that she couldn't pick up her child from the hospital who was sick because she didn't have identification. And she started to cry and you know, so for our immigrant community, this is a huge thing. A lot. And they're very grateful to me. When I go into the um, different immigrant organizations, like like this that, you. they <laughs> treat me like a rock star. And I'm like, I'm amazed by it. Yeah, so. no, I mean, yeah. That, it's, you know, I think the timeliness of our interview to, to discuss this, because I know for me, I was very moved by this, by having, you know, and I, I'm born here, so like, uh -huh. but it, for the, because I have a lot of friends who are, you know, sure. undocumented, and I, and I hear their struggles and what they go through, and they work every day, and they, they bring that paycheck home, or, you know, they're really, really hardworking, Absolutely. we're all hardworking, that community as well, and to not have a form of ID, and kind of living in the shadows, and, you know, all of that secrecy, and God knows I know about secrets, <laughs> you know, it's not a fun way, it's not a good way to live, you know, it's, no, you're, you're contributing to society you're working and you're building we're building this community right we're all building it together and to not have ID and to feel like unsafe and talk about have... bringing them out of the shadows yeah as of today I believe there are close to a hundred thousand people who have signed up for an appointment to get this card so that's only in two weeks can you imagine so that's how many people really want this card and, and the appointments unfortunately it takes you almost up until the end of April, beginning of May, or even further to get the appointment. So one of my objectives now is to be able to get more appointments and more authenticators to pay people to actually look at the documents uh, so that we can speed up the process for people yeah. because they're really desirous of this. Yeah, I saw like um, the demand for it was very, very high. The website was down and all that. But you know, that happens in the beginning, right? Sure. You have to build the system so you know it's really efficient. Yeah. But I, I'm just like really, really glad that you, you put that in action and yeah. you've been, you know, spearheading that and you know, a key figure and making that happen for the community. Mm -hmm.